Today I'm in the Mojave Desert, a perfect place for us to talk about our topic today, alluvial fans. And I know what you're thinking, this is going to be a really dry topic, undefinitely intended, but I promise you alluvial fans are actually really interesting and you, or someone you know, might actually be living on one. So first, let's figure out what an alluvial fan is. First, we'll kick things off with a little story about changing the course of nature. In 1941, highway workers around Death Valley National Park end up diverting this water from the Furnace Creek drainage into a different area known as the Gower Gulch, which is this narrow canyon. And what that means is the water and all the debris it moves now flows a different course. Now, here's what happens when water picks up debris, it flows through these narrow canyons, and then it dumps out onto the areas at the mouth of the canyon. And that's the debris that ends up forming an alluvial fan. An alluvial fan is this fan-shaped or cone-shaped pile. You know, let's go find one. Okay, so if you look back there at those mountains, you see a lot of canyons where material is bursting out of the canyons and building up in these broad plains of that rock debris or rock detritus. We call that material alluvium and the piles outside of the canyon's mouth that it's making, like that broad one just behind the darker uh, cone-shaped hill there, that broad area, we call that the alluvial fan. And we call it that because if you look at them, if we could look at these from an aerial view, we would see that they have a real fan shape to them. The material bursts out of the canyon and fans across, making a fan shape, or like I said, sort of a half a cone shape there. Now, of course, all this rock detritus, this alluvium that comes out of the canyons, it's gonna be this hodgepodge mix of whatever rock material sources from that canyon. So it ends up being uh, poorly sorted, uh, sometimes pretty angular, but some of it will look smooth. That's because of desert processes. But for the most part, this poorly sorted hodgepodge of different types of rocks. And if this were to turn into a rock, we would call that conglomerate. But in this case, this stuff is unconsolidated. And so it's an unconsolidated mix of stuff that we call a fanglomerate. Much like all the material you see here spilling out of this gully, but often on a much larger scale. And this stuff is principally moved by water. So it's either stream fed over time out of the canyon across the alluvial fan, or sometimes in abrupt phases and during storms and debris flows. Now there's two really important concepts we should be thinking about here. One is energy and the other is deposition. When these rock fragments that get weathered and eroded break from the rocks, they are then transported, like we said, via water, and then they must get deposited somewhere. So we need a depositional environment. In this case, this material gets deposited across the fan in some of the gullies dug into the fan and then the finer stuff gets deposited in the basins or playas. Hey, just a real quick message from me, Heather, the host here at Let's Go Geo. Actually, I am host, videographer, photographer, editor, creator, all that stuff. This channel is run solely by me, and I started it because I do love geology and all things related to the topic, and I love teaching, and I thought it would be a great way to bring to people that in the field experience, but digitally. So. Let's Go Geo was born. The project's going well, but I have a lot of great other ideas. So if you want to help me out, support me, and help the project move along, you can find me on Patreon, and you can become a fan there as well as get access to exclusive content. So head over to Patreon. Otherwise, let's get back to today's topic. Which brings us to our next important topic, energy. Now, the reason that different rock fragments deposit the way they do in these types of systems is due to changes and energy. So let's imagine we're walking across a alluvial fan. And while we do this, watch this bottle here. 
I've shaken up some water and different sized sediments and rock fragments, and I want you to watch how they settle as I talk about our alluvial fan walk. So, okay, we're starting, we're walking out of the canyon, and we're walking over big boulders. There's huge rock fragments, and we come to the mouth of the canyon. Oh, we're at the top of the alluvial fan, called the head. And we're still walking across some larger rock fragments, and as we make our way down, to mid fan, we see that they get a little smaller and we continue on down to the bottom of the alluvial fan called the foot. And we notice that the rock fragments are getting even smaller. And as we walk out into a broad flat basin called a playa, we find that now it's all the fine, small sediments, the silts and sands that are deposited out here, maybe even some sand dunes around. And that is because this whole time, everything was fining. The material got from larger at the head to finer at the foot, and that is due to changes in the energy. We also see this in systems like deltas. If you follow a river for a very long time, you can see this process. Up in the mountains where the material sources, it will be larger, but by the time you get to where it spills out into a delta, the energy slows down and finally those suspended small particles can settle out. And the whole time we've been talking, Stay that's what's there. been happening in our model in a bottle here. As you can see, the different sized particles settled sequentially depending on the size and the changes in the energy from when I shook it to as it settled and calmed down. Okay, so I mentioned alluvial fans can get pretty big, so we measure them in feet or miles or kilometers even. And they're a gently broad slope, about two to five degrees out from the canyon and the mountain. But some features can get more steep and coarse. We call those debris cones. Now, if we have a large drainage basin with a bunch of streams cutting through, fine grain, soft rock, you're probably going to get one of those large, broad, gently sloping alluvial fans. But if instead we have debris that is coming down in storm events and it's likely piling up in these big steep piles, that's where we get those debris cones. When measuring alluvial fans, we talk about their profiles. So we can either measure the alluvial fan from head to foot, which is the radial or longitudinal profile, or we can measure across the alluvial fan, which we call the transverse profile. Using you or me as a demonstration, if we measure from your head to foot, that's your radial or longitudinal profile. But if we measure across, that's the transverse profile. Now, geologists have actually been able to study fans and their behavior and determine that many of them are these piecemeal assemblages of different phases of deposition over thousands of years. Now, how do they know that? Well, one interesting way is through desert varnish. If you've ever walked across a desert landscape, you may have noticed some rocks look darker versus the lighter rocks. Now, this isn't always just due to a different type of rock. There's actually a dark coating on many of these rocks at the surface, and this is desert varnish. It's actually iron and manganese coatings on the rock surface. So, how do we use this to determine the ages? Well, the darker stuff must have been sitting around for some time in order to get that coating. We know it takes a really long time, sometimes thousands of years to get a buildup, or at least hundreds of years. So we know this stuff was sitting for longer, and we know the lighter stuff was more recently deposited. And so they can actually use this to determine which areas were deposited when and get depositional phases on the alluvial fan. But Desert varnish gets even cooler than that. The, the surface of the rock can be studied by looking at the stable carbon isotopes and determine things about the conditions when this stuff was deposited. And that tells us stuff about climate change as well. So fans change for all kinds of different reasons. Sometimes they get bored. Sometimes you're not winning. Not those types of fans, alluvial fans. Believe it or not, in an environment like this, when you're in the Mojave Desert on a warm, generally still day like today, kind of looks like nothing ever happens here. But this stuff's actually on the move, thanks to wind and water. Now, alluvial fans change for a lot of different reasons. 
one of those can be just the natural uh, changes in stream patterns. Streams, if you think about it, will sort of keep digging in and backing up at the head of the stream. Alluvial fans are dissected by tons of streams, all having their own little character and possible changes, but they can also be dissected across the fan by things like fault scarps, and tectonism can cause real changes in our behavior. It can cause steepening of our fan, which changes the energy of our depositional environment. There's also some other things though that can change our alluvial fans, and you're looking at one of them. Yeah, humans. Like our story at the beginning, humans like to alter nature quite often, a lot more than they should, and that Gower Galt story is a great example. Water and debris caused problems with the roads, the Badwater Road, nearby California 190, and it also caused changes in the groundwater. The area of the original stream, which was Furnace Creek, would be lowered. The water table in the new area, which was the Gower Gulch, would be rising. And this has huge implications, obviously, on the groundwater, which affects the vegetation as well. And vegetation is always connected with soil, sediment, and geology. So, what's our lesson here? We gotta be careful when we mess with nature. Mm -hmm.